Hi and welcome. My name is Emilio and we're going to be looking at VMware. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff around VMware, what it is, how you use it, how you configure it, and what sort of benefits VMware has over some of you know some earlier technologies that have existed way back when. Of course, in the olden days, you would have physical servers, right? You would go and have to build a domain controller. You would have to go and build an email server, a file server. You'd have to go to the shops, buy a physical server, set it up in some sort of a server room in a data center, install Windows Server onto it, configure it, and that was it. And you had to go and build another one and another one and another one and keep buying more and more and more hardware essentially costing you a lot of money and a lot of space inside a server room. So the VMware suite of products allow you to virtualize physical servers into virtual servers. So where you had to go and build a email server, an exchange server in the olden days, you had to go and buy the hardware. You now essentially build a virtual version of that server. You get the same performance, the same security, and you actually get a bit of extra sort of nice features in VMware that you wouldn't have gotten in a physical server. Of course, behind VMware's virtualization, you still do need physical servers, all right? So you still need to go and purchase a Dell, a Lenovo, a, you know, a, a whatever, a Cisco um, server of some kind. You still need to go and rack it and set it up in a server room in a data center. But what you're doing differently is rather than installing Windows onto that server or Linux, you're installing VMware's ESXi onto that server. VMware's ESXi is an operating system, much like your other operating systems, your Windows, your Linux, etc. But this is called a hypervisor. You may have heard the term hypervisor. So VMware's ESXi is a hypervisor. Essentially, you're converting a physical computer into a hypervisor. And then within that physical computer, now running ESXi, you go and build virtual machines or servers within that one physical computer. So you can go and build a Windows server, a Linux server, servers for everything, 10 servers, for example, running on one physical piece of hardware. So you've got ESXi running on some server software, and then you've got all these virtual servers sitting within it. And the great thing is that you save on space. You save on the physical capacity that is required to store all of this equipment in a comms room, in a server room. You also share resources. So let's say, for example, you go and build yourself a file server. In the olden days, you had to go and buy a physical server, and you perhaps had to go buy, uh, buy it with specific specifications, a specific CPU and specific RAM. You went and bought it with eight gig of RAM, let's say, back in the day, wow, there's a lot of RAM, or maybe even, even way back then, it was even maybe two gig of RAM. Um, and then two years down the track, the file server is still going, but you're not using anywhere near eight gig of RAM. You're only using one gig of RAM because that's all that's needed. Well, in VMware, you can actually allocate that amount of RAM. You could allocate one gig of RAM to a virtual machine, build it. It's using one gig of RAM on the physical ESXi, which is sitting above it, the physical server. Two years down the track, you're realizing actually the resources are pretty hot on that. It's using almost a gig all the time You've got some free resources now perhaps available on your ESXi host. You could just add more RAM and you can easily expand those VMs. You can add more resources to those VMs. You could add more CPU. You could add more RAM. You could add more storage to the VM as easy as just shutting it down, adding some resources, powering it back on. You're now good to go. You didn't have, you couldn't do that before. You had to go and buy additional RAM. You had to go and buy additional storage. You had to go and configure all of this stuff. You had to shut down. You had to de-rack de -rack the server, open it up, and do all these other things. 
Those days are now gone. You only have to do that in the event where you have to update your actual hardware for your ESXi host itself, which is your very top level. So what a lot of companies will do is they will go and buy a pool, or one or two or a pool of ESXi servers. Again, any sort of conventional server that you could buy. You can even install ESXi on a desktop or a laptop at home uh, for a purpose of this lab. And, that, and that's maybe what you're doing in this video. You're going to do that in a lab environment and that's great and it'll work well. But what you need to consider, of course, is that if you're gonna be building VMs within that uh, server, within that desktop, laptop, wherever you're gonna be building it, you're gonna be sharing the resources that are physically available. So the more CPU, the more RAM, the more storage you have available on that physical store, on that physical uh, server, the more VMs you can build and the more resources you can add to those VMs. You can actually build the VMs a lot more stronger or you've even got resources available that you could increase the resources of those VMs in future. So VMware is brilliant. Um, ESXi is completely for free. You can download it off the internet. I'm gonna give you some guides on how to do that. You download it, you install it on your uh, piece of server, desktop, laptop hardware. You then configure it and then you can start building VMs by easily connecting to it over a web browser. We're using vSphere over a web browser. And then you can start configuring, building VMs and setting them all up and having them all available on your network. So let's look at some different terms. Um, so if we're talking about VMware, we're talking about the vendor. So the company itself is called VMware. All right, you, there's others out there such as Citrix and Microsoft who also do uh, virtualization technologies. But of course, we're focusing on VMware. Now the core things that we're gonna be talking about here are two primary pieces of software or configuration technologies that are available within the VMware stack of applications. The first being ESXi. As I said, that is the hypervisor. It is just an operating system that you're gonna install. Instead of Windows or Linux, you install the ESXi operating system. And that is the first step to be able to let you to start building VMs. ESXi can run standalone, can run all on its own. All you need is another computer to be able to connect to that ESXi host over a web browser. Essentially, you'd use another computer, you open up the web browser, and as long as the ESXi network is uh, visible to your PC, to your laptop, connecting to this other one, to the, to the ESXi host, you put in the IP address of the ESXi host, and you then log in, you present it with the credentials, you throw those in, and then you're in. And you can do all of that sort of stuff and start building things right from there. The one thing about that is, of course, it's one single ESXi host. The great thing about VMware is that you can't, it doesn't only allow you to build virtual machines and share resources, which is great, but the one step above that is some software called vCenter which is all part of the vSphere stack. VMware's vSphere stack includes ESXi as well as vCenter. vCenter is one step higher and allows you to manage multiple ESXi hosts. This is perfect, this is amazing because what that lets you do is now you can have two, three, four, 100 ESXi hosts inside a vCenter environment all of them running virtual machines, virtual servers. And then you've got benefits such as sharing resources across all of your pool of hosts. How cool is that? You can actually take all of your hosts, share resources. You can move VMs. Physically, you've got a VM sitting on that host. You can now move it between all of your hosts. You can clone it. You can make templates. You can ensure that if one host goes down, you don't lose your VMs, they automatically start up on another VM. You can do things such as sharing storage, sharing all these other resources. It is incredible. So ESXi, standalone, vCenter manages your multiple ESXi versions. Now, as I said, we are looking specifically here at version seven, but earlier versions before seven were 6.7, 6 6.5, 6, and then 5.5, 5, and then 5 generally. From earlier versions to the current versions, they moved from a desktop GUI application to now being fully web-based. So, so we are gonna be using a browser to manage all of your VMware environment. But the, the features generally have been around for quite some time. So even if you're running version 6 or version 6.5 or 6.7, 
uh, the, the features that we're gonna be showing you are all very similar. At least the concepts and the process is all very similar. Now, of course, as I said, VMware ESXi can run on a server, can run on a laptop, can run on a desktop. But what you do need to ensure is that the hardware can become, is compatible with virtualization technology. So sometimes you may find that you download ESXi and you try to install it on an older computer, on an older server, perhaps a computer that existed before VMware was a big thing, and it may not be able to run natively because of the virtualization technology being either disabled or not available at all on that particular hardware. Um, generally, you can go into the BIOS of your computer and enable virtualization technology to be able to allow you to install a hypervisor. If it's not there, you may have a problem, but you essentially need the hardware to be compatible to be able to install ESXi. Now, currently, almost every computer will be able to run ESXi without problem. Even going back several, several years, five years plus, you'll generally be able to do it as well. You may not be able to run version seven, but you may be able to download version 5.5 or 6 or 6.5, for example, on an older computer. So just be aware of that. If you are downloading this and you are following this guide and it doesn't work, that is why. So here is our ESXi to give you an example of what it looks like. Uh, you'll see that we are logged in, all right? I've added in my credentials to log in. I've accessing this via a web browser, giving me a bit of information essentially about what my ESXi host looks like. Now this is running, you'll see that right here, it's running on an Intel NUC. This is a small little computer. This is an i7 computer. Uh, it's not even very very specced out. It's, it's actually not that powerful, but you can see that it's running ESXi quite well. Uh, it shows me a bit of an overview of what's going on. You've got some settings here that you can go and configure. You've then got your virtual machines. Here are a whole bunch of virtual machines that I have built. You'll see that these are Windows servers. I've got Ubuntu Linux. I've even got another version of ESXi running within um, ESXi, uh, which is something cool. But you've got a list of all your VMs. You've got all the stats of what's going on, VMs that are powered off, VMs here that are powered on. Uh, you've got things such as your storage, which um, we're gonna talk about uh, in another video around sharing your NAS and your SAN storage, how all your storage works, especially if we're talking about vCenter, how it all works together, and then networking. Of course, all of your networking is virtual. Um, you've got virtual switches, you've got virtual ports, as opposed to physical switches and physical ports. So you can deal with all of this virtually, uh, which is fantastic. So of course, this is ESXi on its own. Then you've got vCenter. Now this is the one level higher, and it manages all of your ESXi hosts. Here is the host within vCenter. Uh, again, it shows me the version, it shows me all the VMs written, you know, sitting within it. Um, I've then got other things such as clustering, where I have hosts within clusters, you can share resources. But then similar to what we had in our ESXi, you've got an area here for all of your data stores and for all of your networking as well. But you've got a whole range of other technologies available within vCenter itself. So that hopefully has given you a bit of an overview of essentially what VMware is, the benefits of VMware, and why you should be trialing VMware uh, in your own personal uh, learning, your own lab, in a business, wherever it may be. But as I said, this is the first video of several videos that I have available uh, that will cover all things around VMware, and hopefully you find this very, very helpful. But that's it. Thank you so much for spending the time with me today on this video. This Like, comment, subscribe to my channel to be kept up to date with all of my video releases. We'll see you next time.